Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started. So excited to see all of you here for this virtual reunion. Um, you may notice there are two people uh, on the Zoom that you might not recognize, um, and I'm super excited to introduce them as our guest speakers. Um, they are both high school to art school alumni, um, and in the spirit of sort of uh, giving you some perspective on the college application process, um, both from a al distinguished alum who recently went through it and one who has a little bit more perspective. We're super excited to introduce you to our two guest speakers. So I'm just gonna give a little introduction and then you two can chime in and say hi. Um, so first, we're super excited to be joined by Janine Wang. Um, who graduated in 2010 from high school to art school. Janina is a furniture maker working in Philadelphia who holds a BA in architecture from Cooper Union and an MFA in furniture design. She's exhibited all over the country um, and currently works in home goods and furnishing as well as teaches uh, wood turning studio class at Bucks County Community College fine arts woodworking program as well as and hosting workshops and demos at craft schools across the U.S. So um, if you could just uh, say hi and introduce yourself Janine thank you for being here. Hi and also hi Chantal. <laughs> You're the Hi. only one I recognize. Uh, um, I, yeah, I, it's, I guess it's been a really long time. Um, thanks for the intro and it's cool to be back. I've heard a lot of things have changed since I've been there. So um, I'm looking forward to hear about that too. Um, but yeah, I think you kind of covered everything. High school, art school was really, really important to, um, me getting into the colleges that I wanted and just having the options that um, I wanted to have because I don't know, I really like choices and I don't like just getting pigeonholed into one thing or like the easiest thing. So um, high school, art school definitely opened up all the doors. And um, like you said, I went through architecture school. It was not for me. Um, and then I went to RISD for furniture design and I, um, the building arts are kind of like experience heavy. So I've been uh, the skill of building is kind of just, it's like about how much you know. So um, I've been working full time as a furniture maker and like a CNC technician um, for the past, since graduating in 2018. Um, and now I've just started like done my first year of like legit teaching and um, I'm kind of at like a crossroads right now as to what to do with my career. So it's kind of, it may be good to like touch base and share what I'm thinking about too. Amazing. Thank you, Janine. Super excited to have you. Um, also want to introduce our fellow guest speaker, Sally Lee. Sally graduated from the high school art school program in the summer of 19 and then continued on into the fall uh, 2020 program, so the year before you all. And upon completion, she was offered admission into her tutoring schools on full ride scholarships, FIT and Parsons. She's currently a first year fashion design student at FIT and recipient of their presidential scholar program. Um, she also does video work that dives into everyday life and uh, conceptual themes around identity and culture. Um, one of her pieces entitled Harmony Between Two Names was selected for this super competitive uh, exhibition upon her high school graduation uh, organized by Arts Connection. So we also love to brag about that. Uh, welcome, Sally. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy we get to see each other again. Um, I think high school to art school opened up my eyes because before high school to art school, I didn't know if I wanted to go to art school or not. I was very conflicted. And um, but going to high school to art school, not only did I learn about art, but I also made friends and like long lasting friends as well. And being in the community is so great. You know, people think alike and like have the same dream and have the same goal. And it's something that I always want to be part of. So, yeah. Thank you, Sally. We're really happy that we could be part of your success and support your transition. 
Um, so tonight, everyone, uh, the purpose is twofold. One, we really wanted to hear from you all as to how things have gone and are going uh, following your completion of high school art school. Obviously, things in the world have been crazy, but we're super eager to uh, hear your college and life updates and also give you a platform to share those with one another. And then the second purpose is really uh, aims to be in service of you all. You are about to or have just made what feels like one of the most consequential and I'm sure the most stressful decisions of your life. Um, and so we want this uh, evening to really be a resource to you to help you think through that upcoming decision. If you are deciding between a couple schools as Sally was last year or um, as you know, all of uh, the adults in this room can relate to, um, bring that up and pose the question to the group. And um, we want to um, also, you know, position these two high school art school graduates as a resource to help you think through this college decision. Um, so we're gonna start with updates. Uh, we'll sort of transition into advice where our two guest speakers, as well as of course, our teaching artists can kind of weigh in as to, um, to answer some of the questions that might have come up or provide any advice that might help you think about this college decision. Um, and then finally, because it's a Friday night and why not, um, we'll close with kind of a fun and very weird version of Never How I Ever. Um, so with that, let's uh, get started with updates. And the way we wanted to do this is kind of popcorn style. Um, so I'll throw one student under the bus first and then we'll just start the chain. Um, and then when you give your updates, uh, you could keep them somewhat brief just so we have a chance to get to everyone, maybe a couple minutes or so, and just share, um, you know, an update on your life is welcome, but specifically would love to hear the results of your college applications, what schools you got into, um, any financial aid info you would like to share if you have it, um, and close uh, you know, with a question if there's something that you are seeking advice on or um, you know, are thinking, oh, I'm trying to choose between X or Y school, what advice might you have? Or here's a question I have that you can pose to the group and then we'll um, kind of answer them collectively after everyone has a chance to update. Sound good? Any questions? Awesome. All right. Well, let's get started and uh, let's start with Anya. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you again. Um, I committed to RISD and Rose is going to be my roommate. <laughs> yeah, um, nothing new. I'm kind of just like chilling. I'm not doing any new art at the moment because I'm kind of burnt out. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing. I think we're all going through it a little bit. Um, I have like five new tattoos, all, everything on my fingers. <laughs> and yeah, that's all. Uh, do I pick somebody else now or? Okay. Uh, Corrales, what are you up to? Hey, hi guys. Um, I'm a good news. First of all, it's so happy. I'm so happy to see everyone. It's so fun. You're all like in the screen. It's crazy. Okay. Um, I committed to FIT and I'm going with a couple other people in the Zoom, so it's very fun. Um, and I think after I, I committed, I think now I'm just kind of like in, in crazy artist limbo where you're like, oh my God, it's done. But now I have to think about being thrusted into adulthood and getting a job and paying for things. So yeah, and yeah, that's it's just very odd. It's the end of the year, everything's crazy. I still have homework, I don't know how, but yes. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna toss it to, to Siam. Hi guys, it's so good to see everybody again. Um, yeah, I think decision day was like the first, so like we already uh, we all like made our commitments, which is like super cool. But um, yeah, I'm going to CCNY, and uh, I'm gonna go with Micah too, who's not in the call, so I'm gonna yell at her about that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, things have been good. Yesterday was Eid. I got six hundred dollars, which is like a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's. That's what's been up so far. Um, I'll pass it to Clara. Hi. Um, so right now, um, I haven't been doing much 
lately either. Um, I'm kind of also brained out like Anya. <laughs> um, but I committed to NYIT and right now I'm just choosing my classes and I made an appointment with my advisor. Um, so yeah, um, but um, life update. Um, I got a job through SYEP, so I'm very excited. So I'm making money, <laughs> saving for college. Um, and yeah, that's all that's been happening. So yeah, um, I'll pass it to Jackie. Uh, hi, I committed to FIT with Corrales. I'm going for illustration. Um, uh, I think same as most people, it's sort of like a limbo phase where it's like, it's over, but it's not over because I'm still getting emails telling me like, you need to choose an advisor, you need to choose classes. And it's like, let me breathe for a second. But um, luckily there hasn't been a lot of schoolwork. So I've sort of been like drifting through the day a little more at ease than it was during college, like applications. So I'm doing pretty okay. Um, yeah, I'll pass it to Ro. Hi, um, so God, Anya already spoiled it, but we're rooming together. <laughs> um, uh, rooming dates this upcoming Monday, so we're excited about that. Um, any updates? Oh, I got a septum piercing without telling my mom, and then I told her, and then I got in big trouble, but she, it's okay, it's fine, we're all cool. Um, yeah, that's about it for life updates. I'll pass it to Maria. Hi. <laughs> well, as you guys know, I'm taking a gap year to work better in my portfolio and also to get a job to help my mother with everything in general. So yeah, I haven't done duplication formally, but you know, I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm doing the right choice by taking my time to do the best I can. So yeah. I'll pass it to Erin. Hi. Um, as you see, a very big hair change. Um, I thank you, Ro. I my hair is cut real short for the summer, and it's like blue, and I really like it. Uh, I have a job. I I'm working at the Art Students League right now. Uh, I work as a gallery attendant, which has been really cool because uh like being in a job surrounded by I'm also taking a gap year like Maria I'm not even sure if I'm gonna go to college um because just depending on how things go um but being like in a job that's surrounded by art which is cool and sometimes like I was helping put away stuff in their permanent collections like oh cool 1912 where they had a bunch of they had a bunch of original sergeants that I got to like see and hold and that was super cool um I'm still in the art like seeing, I'm not drawing as much, but I'm I'm still participating in things like I, I'm getting commissions and I, I do zines still, excuse me. And I hoping once things open up a little bit more cause I got fully vaccinated and everything. And once things open up, yeah, dude, I got I got to get it early cause I'm still less than a year out of college, uh, not college, oh, I'm less than a year out of surgery. So I got it like a month or two ago. And I'm hoping once things open up um, to like start doing things like tabling at, uh, fairs, you know, they have like the Brooklyn uh, um, market. And I, kn I know I signed up for that right before COVID and it didn't go through because of COVID. But I'm hoping to do things like that uh, once they open up. But even though I'm not going to college, I'm still kind of in limbo of like, eh. so like I'm, I'm doing some commissions and I'm doing like a zine or two. But other than that, I'm not really doing any art. Um, I guess those are the biggest things for me. I'm gonna send it over to Devon. Hi, what's up guys? Uh, I committed to Pratt um, through the HOP program. So it's a full ride, um, very good. Uh, I will be, I'll also be I'll also be trying to get my vaccine um, because it's required in order to go on the campus and everything. So I'm gonna try and get that sometime soon. I, I don't know when, but I'm gonna try and get it. Um, I've been drawing a lot. I've been mainly like just practicing as always I've been. Uh, I, I need to get back on my, gra my grade so I can actually graduate uh, high school. 
it's not it's not looking the greatest right now, but uh, things are looking good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, otherwise, than that, yeah, as I said, everything's looking good. Can you pass it to somebody? Yeah. Uh, Raid. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, yeah, I committed to Fordham, which is that's the school I wanted to go to, and they gave me a pretty good uh aid, so I thought I was good. And uh, I also, yeah, basically, I like what like everybody else was saying, like even after like the college, like the acceptance, and I thought it was gonna be over, like oh, I can finally relax. But no, they are sending me so many emails, so many like things to do, like I need to do with like immunization form, like and everything. So yeah, it's still hectic, but I'm still trying to pull through. That's what you gotta do. Can you select somebody? Uh, who else didn't go? Uh, Aurora, did she go? Yeah, um, I didn't. So uh, I committed to City Tech and senior itis is hidden. Um, kind of like in a slump, you know, everything's exhausting, but I'm waiting for summer to come at least so I can like take a break, not have to do homework anymore. Um, because I've been preparing for AP exams, so that's probably what's like draining me at the moment. But yeah, no, nothing, nothing significant has happened. Um, who hasn't gone yet? Valeria? Hello, I'm so happy to see you guys again. Um, so I'm kind of at the end of my gap year now and I committed to Hunter recently because um, they accepted me for Muse scholars and that was like the best thing. I was so happy. I was uh, kind of aiming to go into Hunter for two reasons, either um, like I was hoping that they would either accept me for Muse or for Macaulay, but they accepted me for Muse, which is really good. And I think, yeah, the gap year, has been really good. It's been the best decision I've made in my life. Like it's been uh, kind of necessary for me to take a break from school and just decide on what's right. Because last year I committed to Pratt with like no scholarships, no financial aid and like had to step back and actually um, kind of think about it a little bit more. But now I'm actually happy as to where I'm at. Is there anyone who hasn't gone? Okay. I think that's everyone. Excellent. That was so fun. Thank you all for sharing that. I love Amanda's dance and I'm very, very glad we got that on camera. <laughs> oh yeah, we're recording. This is, you know, it is what it is at this point. Um, okay, so since you all have essentially, you've all made your decisions, um, let's transition and do this um, and open it up the floor to any kind of questions you're thinking through, advice about navigating the first uh, year or semester of college. Um, many of you are going to FIT as Sally does, so maybe there's specific questions you have about that department or program um, that you would like to pose. Let's just open up the floor uh, for advice and questions for our two panelists. Don't all bum, the, bum rush the mic at once, guys. Uh, Siam says, Janine, any recommendations for architecture laptops? Everybody's mic works, you know. Ask the questions. They know me. They know how I am. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, no pressure. You can ask anything. Um, <laughs> I'm willing. I'm down to answer just like even if you think it's the stupidest, simplest question because um, we all had them. Um, as when it comes to laptops, I honestly think you're probably fine with like either. I, I'm assuming you mean like an Apple or a PC, right? Um, um, like if I was to, I guess like if I was to get like a Windows laptop, like I don't know, like did you or your friends like use any specific ones like back in school? I guess. 
Um, honestly, I <laughs> I went to school so long ago. I feel like that um when I was going, like it was all about like which app, like whether or not your Apple PC worked. And now um, all the modeling software has all caught up and um, everything runs on pretty much anything. You don't have to mess around with boot camp and all that. Um, I would I would honestly say not to worry about it too much because there are going to be computers on campus. And a lot of the time, if you're working on campus as opposed to like on your own setup at home, you're like, you're going to work harder, you're going to work better, you're going to work like in the room with your peers. Um, and it's uh, when I was going to architecture school, I was like really depressed for a lot, most of it. And um, I, I tend to just like isolate and I would try to work at home and I just got nothing done, um, nothing at all. So when I actually showed up to campus and use the facilities there, everything's set up for you and you like bond with your fellow classmates, um, you'll do much better. And I think, did you say you're going to CCNY? Yeah. Um, I think from, from my um, friends who have gone for grad school, I've heard that it, uh, what she missed the most was that she, they, like people didn't just stay in the studio all night and like live there because a lot of people had a lot of stuff going on in their own lives and they're like paying their own way through college um, and like working part time while going to school. So they actually didn't, she felt like she didn't get enough face time with her classmates as much as she did at Cooper where we met. And so um, I would say like as much as you can try to like network with everybody around you because that ends up being the really important thing when you graduate. Perfect. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I have a question. Um, do you regret, like, do you, despite the fact that you didn't become an architect, do you think that still going to school for it was worth it? Or do you regret that decision? Do you, like, do you think, um, like, do you think you could have gone without it? Or do you think there were things you learned while going through that, that kind of uh, contributed to what you do now? Um, definitely. And that's a really good question. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I know that you mentioned you were going to try to like take an unconventional non-art school path toward artistry. Um, Every single thing that you do contributes to your unique person later on down the road. Like you can't really make a mistake. It really just kind of adds up and like creates a more full, um, full bodied, unique human. And so just for example, like I, I always feel conflicted about this because I learned a lot from architecture school, even though I was miserable the whole time. Um, when I, uh, when I went to RISD, the first critique that we had, um, I always say this because like it was the most obvious moment where I was like, oh, I'm really different because of my background. Um, we really focused in architecture school on like how to flesh out an idea through like really rigorously through steps and how to like present it properly, like what kinds of plans, drawings and like background information and images you might need, that kind of a thing. And then how to like, like show up with the narrative to walk everyone through it. And so I did that on like my first critique um, at RISD, which not in an architecture program. And um, it was like about like elevators. <laughs> it was like about something super mundane, but like I went through like the history of elevators, why they're um, significant in the context of like the built world. And then I did like a, pretty rigorous study of the ele like the really boring elevator in our building and like then proposed changes to it and um I remember afterwards uh, my classmates came up to me and were like whoa how did you do that like where did that come from what the hell and then um I did flex that Coop Union had the first elevator shaft. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, every everything helps. Um, 
And I would say for the knowledge that I gained out of that, I don't regret it at all. Um, kind of in the, the same area of that question, how much does your uh, um, like major or degree you get after um, being in college for so long uh, affects the kind of job you get or the, the kind of job you lead into? Because I'm going to prep for illustration, um, but I want to do more like, like after the fact, I want to like lead into animation or more things that were that, like illustrate, like more things within illustration, but some things, you know, that's not necessarily just illustration, but like animation and all of that. I, I just said that, but yeah. Let me see. The, the nice thing about Pratt is that it's such a like big and pretty integrated school. Um, and you're going to make friends with all the other majors if, as long as you like keep putting yourself out there. So, um, like I actually, I, I was friends. Well, my best friend dated a guy for a long time in the illustration department at Pratt. Um, and he ended up doing like very like very other side of the road like high tech computer animation um, renderings and stuff and um, whereas like I saw a couple of their peers also they, they were doing like stop motion you know um, I think you really have to go in with the mind of um, like what classes do I want to take? Because all the other one, all the classes are available to you. I'm pretty sure at Pratt, and so you you kind of pick your own path, and do your own research a lot of the time. Um, at the end of the day, it kind of it comes down to like a lot of random things and experiences. Like you might just take like one class in the industrial design department and be like whoa like I I know how to woodwork <laughs> and um, I had a friend who did that at Drexel who was an illustrator and she ended up getting a job like in Philly at a woodworking place just because of like this one class that she took and it gave her like the credentials to go through with it. Um, I do think that uh, school seems to be more important like credentials seem to be more important if you're looking to like get a job after school versus if you're trying to like explore things on your own if that makes sense um because those are the people who are looking for like do you have a bfa do you have an mfa um like i it that's i mean yeah it's it's a confusing thing to think and talk about because there are a lot of benefits to it but it's not the most important thing in the world yeah, I want to actually open up that converse, that question uh, to Amanda and Chantal, too, um, as fellow arts graduates, to see if you have a perspective about um, how important it is to have a one-to-one -one connection between exactly what you study and the ultimate job or field that you might want to go into. Do you have any thoughts on that? I feel like now it's like so much more like flexible, like your like your major is not going to um, be like the end all be all of what jobs you're gonna get. I think you should think more like not so much about like what major is gonna get me this job, but instead like what skills at my school are going to help me to get this job. And Amanda had a good point about like elective credits, like use your elective credits to build up the skills that you feel like your major might not offer you. Um, and then, yeah, like Devon, like even if you're gonna study illustration, like it's still very feasible for you to take classes that can help you build up your skills as an animator. Um, yeah, like even though like I didn't go to Pratt, like even like using RISD as an example, um, like I knew a lot of people who studied illustration who took animation classes. Um, and sometimes your perspective as an illustrator could be like a huge asset, like in a classroom where like you're like as an illustrator, like you're going to learn a lot more about like storytelling than 
someone who's studying animation who's just learning about like the nuts and bolts and like the technicalities of like how is it that you animate so even like in like the actual job market like that in itself like makes you also stand out in a way than someone who may have just studied animation or just film because you're also bringing that other perspective from a different major I'm gonna jump in here and also add that um, when you go into the marketplace, it's also your portfolio and the work that you're able to create and present after you graduate. So the portfolio that you graduate more so than even what you majored in or where you interned, it's gonna have a big impact on the opportunities that are available to you in the job market. And I'd also encourage you as you are pursuing internships to learn about the different aspects of the animation and the illustration industries and the larger industries that they fall in because animation and illustration can fall within um, an editorial, a commercial, a fashion, um, in different contexts, in different major industries. So if you do illustration uh, for a magazine versus if you do it for a textbook company, your job's gonna look wild different. So yeah. also understanding different industries that the skills that you are developing through the knowledge that you gain at Pratt and through the different minors and majors um, and foundation year, how they contribute to your portfolio and then your knowledge of the industry and what you're able to in the marketplace bargain for. Same, yeah, I would agree with Chantal and Amanda's sentiments. You know, as a hiring manager at QCA, if we're looking for someone to do graphic design work, for example, I do not care what their major was. If they send a website or a portfolio or whatever materials to show that they're capable of doing X job, I'm, I'm completely down to hire them. And I think that logic, as Chantal was saying, expands to different fields where, you know, whether you, regardless of what your major was, if you can showcase through a portfolio or through prior work experience that you're capable of doing X, Y, Z thing that you're applying for, I think that people pay just as much, if not more attention to that than whatever you know uh, name is on your degree. So different ways to, to show competency. Um, yeah. It's kind of cool to think about the portfolio as like a secret backdoor. Cause if like, if you made the thing that is the proof already that you can do it versus most of the time, like I guess from a hiring perspective, you're like all you can do is look at the job description and like the I, I'm sorry the job history that the person has and like the degrees and try to match that up whereas you look at portfolio you're like wow that person knows like like yeah they can do that so that's a cool point does anyone um have any questions for sally as someone who just went through this process the first year of school is fresh on her mind um, some questions about FIT or how she navigated between um, choosing between those uh, two schools. Um, Transitions, adulting. Yeah. Those of you that are wondering and curious about that, any of the budget stuff that any of you might have been thinking about. I know that's on some of your minds. Just in basic, you know, like how do you pay for art supplies, that sort of thing, or what's it like, you know, the difference in the rigor between high school and college, like first year, first semester. Actually, I do have questions for her. Um, I don't know if you had like financial or something, but how did you manage to study and have a job and how did you do that? How did you like pay for, you know, the basic thing, groceries at the same time, doing well, studying, you know, mentally, emotionally and financially? Thanks for the question. Um, I actually, if I was going to like campus, I would be commuting. I live at home with my parents, so um, I don't have a job or, um, yeah, or, but like when it comes to budgeting for like school and stuff, I usually look at what financial aid provides me. So basically I have a press scholarship and another scholarship on top of my financial aid. So whatever they take out, like the school take away, like the leftover will go to my, bank account and whatever leftover I have, I most likely spend that on um, my supplies and everything. But I like to keep a spreadsheet of what I buy so I can keep in track of my budget. <laughs> yeah, because fashion design is, yeah, everything is money, like fabric, that's money and it's, it's a lot. Yeah, but um, 
I would say like if you are working and you have a and you have to pay rent and everything I would say like make a budget for yourself per semester of like how much you want to spend on your supplies because there are like stores that offer cheaper stuff than other ones if you like can find them and take time on that then you can definitely do it um I would say like the emotional <laughs> and mental aspect is really hard to do remote learning especially for somebody who don't have experience like I didn't have experience in fashion design prior to FIT so I had to learn everything from scratch I have to like sometimes I wouldn't understand what my professor is saying so I have to ask my friends for it and I feel like sometimes I also have to catch up with other people just because you know like certain things take me longer than other people because they have done it before but I haven't so I have to like really plan and time manage really well but I would say a lot of people including myself it sometimes is hard to like time manage things where there's like so many things going on but I would say um just like keep time management on in mind but also like talk to people I find that like if you talk to people and like you tell them like what's going on or like um like talk about your projects even that makes you feel better emotional uh, mentally as well yeah um, I think also I I didn't have that much of an issue during undergrad with my finances because college ended up being cheaper than I thought it was going to be. But um, while I was at RISD, it's like $60,000 a year. And um, didn't really offer very good scholarship for grad students. So um, when, uh, like Sally was saying, if you just talk to people, a lot of the time, um, when they know that you're having financial problems, they'll like send opportunities your way. So even though there weren't like necessarily that many venues for like free money, um, but there were opportunities where there were people would be like, hey, you could actually apply for this grant. Like I thought about you um, when um, like based on our conversation, like three months ago, you could apply for this or um, the school actually had a lot of employment opportunities too. And they were at like kind of better rates to like, I, I was, I shouldn't have been paid that much money for the jobs, but they wanted to give you help. So they would like be pretty generous about that. Thank you. You know, one of the things that I recently learned about financial aid, and it could have been um, Amanda that taught me this, so feel free to jump in. Um, but the fact that you could, you can negotiate with financial aid officers and administrators that you can come to them and sort of um, express what you're going through, where your gaps are and uh, essentially not take whatever was written on paper as the end all and be all and try to negotiate a financial aid offer based on communications and forging relationships with college administrators and staff. That was a huge learning for me. Um, is that, yeah. Yeah. have you heard of that? There is a, um, there's a movie called Clueless. It came out in 94 and one scene of the movie, the lead character, you know, says, well, I just got my semester grades and I see, and her dad's like, okay, so it's the beginning of the negotiations of what your grades are actually going to be. And I kind of recount this anecdote to you all to say that consider your financial aid letters, the beginnings of the negotiations and the final results, what you are able to hash out after you call or if possible, if you can go in person with a mask and meet your counselor so that you have a face-to-face -face conversation because that helps to get the best results and they can look you in the eye when you say, I'm trying my best, this is my dream, this is why I wanna go to the school and this is why I need 5,000 extra or 7,000 extra. And the clearer you're able to make your ask, the more likely they'll be able to hear and consider it and potentially help you find that money as opposed to saying, I don't know how to pay for it. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, I don't know what's going on. The clearer you're able to be, be about what you need and how much you need. And then also as you go in, you know, if they have kids, next time you go in, ask them about their kids. If you see that they, you know, like the Knicks, talk to them about the Knicks. If you also genuinely like that, but find little ways to build and create a rapport. Yeah. 
with them and with your financial aid counselors and the people in the bursar's office who are the people that distribute the leftovers that Sally just described, which are also known as refund checks. Well said, absolutely. And that logic can be carried for beyond uh, even just college, but that everyone who controls money is a person uh, that is uh, you can build a relationship with. That's really good advice and negotiate, but know what your ask is, what your minimum is, um, and, you know, be very sincere and genuine. And I know you all have a capacity to be. Any other questions about college, life hacks, or otherwise? Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask uh, both of the speakers. Um, how did you guys, like, um, or, like, how do you guys, like, deal with, like, burnout and, um, like, I don't know, just like motivating yourself to get through work because um, I don't know, a lot of us like have like senioritis and everything because like school is about to end. But um, how do we like avoid that like in college? Some of your faces when he said that were priceless. Um, also for, uh, did Sally go? Oh, no, she's right there. I'm so dumb. Sorry. People keep like leaving in and out. So like the boxes move and I'm just like, okay, anyway, my bad. Um, I, how, um, how did you like uh, schedule like going through like online classes and everything? Because um, next year, like most of us like might be doing online or hybrid. And um, I want to like, I want to actually learn something in classes. Because <laughs> like, um, I don't know, like right now, high school is like pretty bad. Like, I don't think I'm learning anything uh, in the Zoom calls, but like, I want to make the most out of it for like first year. So um, I don't know, what's like, do you have any like tips or advice on like how to uh, get the most from like uh, all of our online classes? If I'm being honest with you, sometimes I struggle with the same thing as well, because I'm still navigating through the way. Um, but I would say like, putting your mental health first is always really important. Like um, instead of five minutes, waking up five minutes before Zoom, I mean, before your class starts, which I have done that before, <laughs> maybe wake up 30 minutes or even an hour early. It makes a huge difference. I have tried it and it generally does. Um, Cause like then you're not rushed into the digital world and like have to listen to your lecture. You know what I mean? And I think like, um, well, senior year, I went to Hunter College, so I got to experience like the college stuff as well, but it's incomparable to art school because I feel like for right now, um, my class is like three to four hours long and it's really hard to stay on, um, to stay focused because um, on the internet, you can just go anywhere and you might not focus in class, but try to focus like throw your phone away don't don't look at it <laughs> even though it's so tempting to text somebody back but um I guess also like try to engage make a connection with what your teacher is talking about I, sometimes that's hard but like try to really like ask yourself like why am I doing this you know what's the purpose have a goal for your project like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like get a good grade it could be like um I don't know I want to make an avant-garde design that was my goal for my project so like that kind of kept me motivated but also um I think on YouTube I was also googling like how to stay motivated in school but um somebody gave me this really good tip like let's say you don't want to do something right but like why don't you ask yourself why don't I do one minute of that thing you know like after a minute passed do I still want to do it and then you continue and next thing you know you might be focusing and doing that task you know, like little things like that can help you stay motivated. And also talking to your friend, like it's so important during remote learning is to have a group of friends that you can rely on, not just for schoolwork, but also for emotional support. Because at the end of the day, like they're the people who are going through the same thing as you. So they really understand. Yeah, hope that helps. Thank you, Sally. That's really good advice. And some of those tricks and tips I actually still employ as an adult. So again, advice that can carry you through college and beyond. Janine, do you have anything to add to that? Um, 
I have not experienced being a remote learning student this pandemic, but um, I, we did have to do the first quarter of this semester of wood turning one <laughs> virtually. And um, that was not the right fit, but um, I, I thought maybe it helps for students to give feedback to the teachers also um like just speaking from a teaching standpoint like it was really it was just mystifying like i knew i could see all of my students faces on the zoom call but i had no idea what they were thinking and um at some point someone emailed me personally and just like made a suggestion to have a 15 minute break after the first two or two and a half hours and that like made a world of difference. Um, I, I don't know what your you guys' individual classes are structured like, but um, I really liked it when my students would just like say stuff like in the, in the middle of the lecture, like speak up and have questions. And um, I found that not only did that help me from like hearing the sickening sound of my voice for so many hours straight but it also like brought all the other students like back on um and like caught everybody's attention and I mean it's supposed to be as interactive as we can possibly get from home right so um I guess I would just suggest doing that I don't know if that's again appropriate in all situations um I I guess that's kind of tied into the original first question about burnout. Um, I, I just to touch on that, like it helps for me to um, I do like a lot of really rote tasks um, when it comes to building stuff. And I had a teacher in uh, grad school tell me once about like, this project that she did that had 2000 hand cut joints in one project and she and everybody was like oh my god how did you get through that and um, she said what she did and I've done this since now is to time herself doing one so she like timed herself doing just one and then like did the math and was like okay if I spend this many hours on like for this many days I'll be able to complete this by then and so however like it is that that kind of breaks down for whatever you're working on that helps a lot like it doesn't make the work any less but it makes it feel like non nebulous. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. That was really helpful to hear the educator's perspective of how, you know, teachers are struggling on the other ends of Zoom too, and how students can take ownership over their learning and uh, show up to get the best experience. So that was helpful. And I appreciate your advice too about um, sort of the time management component. I think that that can help mitigate stress and the anxiety around doing work as well. Like that's something that I've employed as someone who is sort of uh, uh, prone to get overwhelmed by tasks to really sit down and think, oh, okay, well, this is gonna take me four hours. This is gonna take me five and even go as far as to put that in the calendar. And the beauty of that is, you know, Janine was saying, it doesn't change how much time it takes you to do a task. But once you see it on your calendar, you can say, um, oh, this actually is manageable. I actually am capable of getting this done. So I don't need to worry about it so much as long as I show up and, you know, do these tasks at these times, it will get done and everything will be okay. Um, so at least uh, that's something that I found helpful as well. Um, other questions for Janine, Sally, for us, for each other, floor is open. I have a question. Um, Sally, how did you deal with senioritis last year? That's a good question. <laughs> um, wow, it has been so long because this whole year just felt like 10 years in the house, but how do I deal with it? Um, I really tried to, well, I was at Hunter College, so I would try to tell myself to go to the library and like sit there and I have to do something before I leave. So little things like that, but also uh, just like 
timing myself like one day i'm going to do this for this many minutes and then tomorrow i'll do this much and then add it up and all together yeah just like take things one at a time instead of trying to do everything at once yeah I have, a, I have a question regarding that, and this is open to everybody. So for me, uh, I do everything at my desk, like drawing, talking, or like meetings and all that. So like, I want, I want to know, like, what are some techniques if some of you have kind of like conquered <laughs> senioritis or, or like find a way for you to um, get back on track or anything like that, because I'm still struggling with that. I actually, my physics teacher once told me this. Um, get a lamp it could be like any kind of cheap lamp but I got one for my birthday for like really expensive that I convinced my brother to spend his money on but okay so um you set a timer and then you throw your phone across the room click on the lamp on so it's like a kind of thinking lamp it convinces you to like I guess train yourself like it's concentration time don't do anything else and it kind of makes me focus more um don't do anything more than 15 minutes at a time if you can't really focus um, so set a minute for like 15 minutes at a time. So like you don't drift away. Um, take a five minute break in between, no more nor less, and then get back on track if you actually need to. That's it always helps me. Um, and then just listen to like jazz, lo-fi. I don't know. Actually, I have a trick is to trick your brain and make it feel like make it think that you're doing something fun so it doesn't get tired. Um, myself, I do, for example, I, I like to hear podcasts uh, all the time of, you know, horror tales and that kind of stuff. I just like to do that. Or, you know, um, an audiobook and that stuff. So while I'm doing something, I'm hearing something else in Spanish to not distract me what I'm doing in English. So that way my brain thinks that I'm having fun, but what I really do is homework. <laughs> It's like some people get that messed up, but the thing is, like, find a way that your brain thinks that you are doing something fun, that it just make it feel good, so it doesn't get really tired, but they, but you're actually doing work. So it's something like that. Along those lines, if you um, stand and work, you can dance and work, like just a little bit. It totally helps. And it like, um, I mean, I have a lot of problems just like sitting there and um, it just kills my wrist, especially using the computer. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I like normally in the wood shop, I use like a fatigue mat and I work standing and just playing music. So it's like fun. Also, as another form of motivation, consider that you do not want to be in summer school right now this summer. Yeah, that got everybody awake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> also, another way to help me is like, I just have to do it. Like Nike said, just do it. You just got to do it. And also like, Sometimes when I procrastinate, I would like be conscious of how many minutes I'm losing. Cause it's like, let's say I procrastinate for 10 minutes. I could have, I told myself, I was like, you could have been done 10 minutes early, you know? And like, that's a way for me to like push myself next time. Be like, you know, don't procrastinate cause you can finish work faster. You know, you just gotta do it. Okay, last call for questions before we transition. Yeah. I wonder, it's a, it's a really dumb question. Um, for the people who worked during school, like college, how difficult was it? Like, honestly, like, how, did you sleep <laughs> at all? I slept. I scheduled my classes around my work. I worked in nightlife and I photographed parties during college. And I did that because I got paid in cash and it was more than what I'd ever get paid on work study. And I was able to set my own schedule around my classes. I did and a required calendar and everything <laughs> and organizing myself very well. Janine, you can go first. 
Um, I, I mean, I'm not going to be that helpful, but I didn't work like really a lot. I worked maybe like uh, 10 hours a week during grad school, which wasn't too bad. Um, I did like I kind of I could feel how that would take away from your work, though. Um, I really wanted to just like throw myself into everything that I was doing. And so I can't I can't even imagine like how hard it must be to work during school because a lot of the time, um, a lot of the time, like everybody else will raise the bar around you and you just like physically don't have the time to work. Um, so I honestly, again, from like the teaching perspective, it has helped me to know which one of my students is working. Um, and just like having them let me know because I don't have to like, like sometimes teachers can be kind of cruel if they think that you're slacking. And so for just to have, like for them to have an understanding of what's going on in your life is super important. I just want to follow up and add that I did not work freshman year because foundation is meant to break you at Pratt. Um, and it's very, very hard to be in foundation year. Um, if you go to pretty much any school that calls it foundation year and work at the same time, I started working sophomore year and afterwards. And I also was photographing like maybe eight to 10 parties a week, which enabled me as a photography major to practice my skills and improve myself as a photographer, which is also why it was very, very helpful because I was doing something that would enable me to get better at the art I was studying. So that's also, if possible, something um, that most of the majors that you're doing is possible, but you definitely wanna wait to get that type of job until you're a sophomore or junior. Also, um, something I wanted to add, and this is something I, um, I wanted to share also, is that I'm actually working right now. Um, we'll only work until the end of May here, but I'm working in a study at the same time. I work from 4 p.m. to midnight. It's hard. <laughs> You have to really get your time done. Um, aside, obviously, my teachers and everything, they can change my schedule because this is high school, you know, it's not college. So it's very hard for me to sleep and everything. But yeah, just communicate with your teachers and everything because they, they, they will totally understand. Because it's, it's very hard to just get to your house to midnight and then try to sleep and everything but just communicate with your teachers and try to get so not try to not to get something that hard because i got the hardest job i ever been to like <laughs> try to make it easy for yourself you know i also did not work my freshman year because that there was like no feasible way i felt like i was able to fit that in i know some people who did and they were very tired um but but also like the people I I saw like doing it like they were able to pull it off it was just a lot more like taxing um yeah and if if you do choose to do on-campus work study I would suggest like finding th things that are like tied to your interests um because then it could help you also like build like real world skills so like you know if you want to be like a lab technician like that could help you gain like software skills or like specific tech skills that are like industry specific um also like work study jobs have like different tiers so some jobs pay higher than others so definitely like ask around and like figure out like what are the jobs that like pay better um, but also know that those are sometimes harder to get, like some work study jobs, all you have to do is apply, like, um, like you like just like sign up for it. And then others, there's like interview processes, like it's like getting like a job. Yeah, uh, that's, I was, um, I also, I did work during school and I was able to go the, the work study route and Chantal makes a good point in that not all work study positions are created equal. Um, and I was fortunate enough to uh, land the highest paying job uh, at my school, which was at the writing center. Um, I'd encourage anyone um, who's interested in writing, a lot of you are really strong writers to look into that. Um, and it was a really great role because um, peers would book appointments with me. And if they didn't, if I didn't have a 4 p.m. or 6 p.m., um, that was time that I could hang out, 
do my homework and get paid for it. Um, and then to the point of real world skills, um, as the only art major that worked at the writing center, um, uh, it, it caught on and students who were finishing their thesis in art or in art history would book an appointment with me and um, could develop that sort of editing skill and, and working with, um, with artists on their artist statements and cover letters and um, research in the arts, which is um, working with artists on professional development and their, uh, their artist statements is part of what I do for a living now. Um, so definitely like a way to cultivate real world skills. And then through that um, was able to um, get recommended for um, independent clients off campus that paid four times the rate. It was $40 an hour to, to edit or, or to tutor uh, individually, which um, at least when I was going to school and it felt like a lot of money. Um, so just thinking about like, I think the, like the advice is to think through, okay, what is the, given my skills and interests, what is the most mileage I can get out of, um, what's the most you can be paid for the least amount of effort and time uh, as sort of like a way to problem solve it. Yeah, Amanda also has a good point in the chat as well that a lot of, um, a lot of colleges hire students for work study in their like PR offices. Yeah, and it can be anything from writing blog posts to photographing events to doing like social media stuff. Sometimes it's part of public relations. Sometimes it's part of admissions. It depends on the school, Sam. Um, and I'd say also if you can get into being an ambassador of social media, that's also something that translates into real world skills because they're always hiring people to do social media at any level. And that's very portfolio based. It's also something that's flexible that you can do while you're in school at a professional level and on campus. And well, you, your Xennials people <laughs> are looking for young people like you who have art skills, who are very critical and thoughtful thinkers um, and creators um, to be brand ambassadors or to run their social media page or to do takeovers. Um, and it is sort of a way to create your own future. If that you're so inclined to do that, there's also other ways. Any other questions? Also, uh, kind of along those lines, don't do that work for free. Um, they're gonna try to get you to do it for free. Don't do it. <laughs> um, it um, a lot of the time, um, once you start like gaining your voice as an artist, people will try to like use that to their advantage and say like, hey, if you do like a takeover for us or do a collaboration with us for free, you'll get publicity. It's not like you have that works sometimes like you have to be really choosy about which organizations you work with, but there are a lot of like pariahs <laughs> out there these days. So um, just be careful. Your time is really precious. Yeah, don't do anything for free, not even an internship at this point. And unless it's something that you're like grandmother that has never heard of anything like Nike or something very, very huge that you can get one time bragging rights for. And I'd say do that about one time. That's the only time that working for free might be a good idea. Because then you can leverage that for something else to get paid more. Again, one time. <laughs> that is it. That is all. And there's so many great funded internship programs and leadership pipelines for individuals to go into the arts. Um, right now, especially in New York, um, there's no need for any of you all to intern for free. Okay, all for being here. This was so fun. Um, I would be remiss and off brand if at this point I didn't remind you that if you haven't already, to please fill up out the uh, high school to art school survey so that we can track you know, all of the information you shared with us as far as where you got in, where you didn't get in, all of the scholarship information that you got, um, because as you know, that is what helps us keep high school to art school free moving forward. So um, if you haven't done that, I will uh, send everybody a reminder, please fill that out. And um, 
You know, thank you so much to our two fabulous panelists and guest speakers uh, for giving your advice and also for humoring, you know, a day in the life of high school to our school. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> lovely to have you here. I, I miss you so much. You all. I'm proud of you. I love you guys. Super proud of you all. Yeah, miss hanging out, being silly with you all. I miss that uh, the cannibalism. Please stay in touch with this program. We're going to be doing, I know I've been saying this forever, but we are going to do a high school art school alumni exhibit. So keep an eye out for that and um, have a good weekend. I'm going to go throw away my skinny jeans. You guys. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Everyone. Goodbye, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.